All right, so we here are able, all right, so we are doing really great here. So we're able to get the information from our, from the API successfully. But this information here is not very useful to us because we want to get it down here. Let's think about different ways in which we can actually fetch, get this data and put down here. Now, it may seem very simple, right? We can just go ahead as we always do, create a few instance variables at the top here. And then once we get that information, which in this case is the data, we can parse through and get it and then up and then update our string and then uh, lots of dance and then and then and then up down here, we can just put a variable and then we should be good. Although that could work, obviously, but that would require us to do a lot of methods here and there that needs to be async. Because remember, um, because we're talking about future objects that are coming through uh, over the internet, right, HTTP request, it's not going to be as simple as just calling a method and then do all this stuff, right? If we do that like we did here, then that means uh, something, this method here, notice has to be an async, and then how, and then we have to create another async method, which will take the value and do further processing. And then we're going to be able to then uh, come down here and do all this stuff that we need to do. In this case, just update our text. Now, there is actually a better way. But because Flower Framework accounted for this issue, they've created a lot of resources, a lot of classes that will help us do HTTP requests and get all the information we want and then parse everything right there and then display to the user. So because we know this is the widget that we need to update, we're going to use the future builder class, which allows us to receive this get weather map or future objects okay and then allows us to actually build whatever we want to build meaning extract the data api json api and then we can add all of the widgets such as list whatever we want uh, onto the screen all of that is done instantly and without us having to go through and creating methods of methods calling other methods making sure they're called inside of async all of that jargon there we don't have to worry about that isn't that great? That really helps our case here. So what I'm going to do to simplify things at the bottom here, I'm going to go ahead and create a widget type because the future builder is indeed returns a widget. I'm going to say widget. I'm going to say update temp widget. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass a string. And of course, what and then I'm going to say return Look at this, I'm gonna say new future builder. There we go. And you notice it says here, we can pass a future type, initial data and builder. So now we have a build here, we can pass all these other things. So for the builder here, we are going to pass, I'm gonna go ahead and say build context, right? Because every time we are creating a widget, we have to pass those. And the next thing I'm going to pass is an async snapshot. Okay. And this async snapshot is going to take in maps because we know our data is going to come in as a map. I'm going to call this snapshot like this. Let's put this in a new line. Okay. And then I'm going to just make it so that we have a body like that. All right. Notice I didn't have to put any async and so forth here, right? Because I'm just returning update a, a widget type, which we can then call here as a child. I can just get rid of all of this and just call here update widget. And for now, I'm just going to pass in a string which says Beira, my home city, something like that. Okay, now let's focus here. So uh, the other thing what we need to pass for us to be able to build is the actual data. For In order for us to get information to build this future object, if you will, this future widget, what do we need to do? We need to pass the actual data, right? So if I'm going to say future, that is the property. Notice it receives future types. What else is future type? There we go, our future get weather here is future type. So this works, right? And then I can just go ahead and say get weather. And I'm going to pass in the 
uh, utils again uh, by D. And for the city, oops, here I'm just going to go past city like that. Okay? Look. Okay, so now inside here, this is where we get all of the info or JSON data. We set up widgets, etc. And all of this is done instantly. And we don't have to do anything besides just putting everything together here. Okay, so what is this snapshot? Well, the snapshot is essentially a snapshot of the data that we're receiving from our future here, which is get weather returns a JSON object of type map. This is why here is a map as well, because that is has to be exactly the same. The types have to be the same as the ones we're receiving here. So let it sink in for a bit. We're using feature build future builder. What Future Builder does, it allows us to actually receive any data from a future type, and then we can build it. And remember this builder we also have in our list view and, and so many other widgets. You see the pattern here? So now we don't have to worry about anything. Okay, so let's go inside here. What I'm going to do now is doing the follow. Uh, I'm going to say if, because I want to check to make sure things are okay before we proceed into building our widgets. I'm going to say if snapshot dot, look, it even has this has data boolean. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. So if it has data, because sometimes it doesn't have, I want to make sure that then if that's, if that's the case, we have some data to work with. I'm going to create a map called content. I'm going to just then say, set it to snapshot that data to get the data that we're getting. So now everything is into a map type, which is exactly what we need. We could have just straight use this, but I like to put things into variables that way we can go through. Now here are what I can do. I can say return because now we need to return an object or a widget. I'm going to say return in this case, new container. Okay. And in this container, I'm going to skip a child. Let's create a new column. We'll see this in a second. And for children, for now, I'm just going to put one child here. And I'm going to use a new list title. Okay, I should I could have said a list, a text, but in this case, I'm going to use a list title, because we have opportunities to do all sort of things with it. A widget, you can use a widget anywhere you want. You may say, well, but I'm not we're not inside of a list of you. Why are you using a list? Well, it's just a widget. Therefore, I can use it whatever I want. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to pass in a title. Okay, this title is going to be new text. And I'm just going to go ahead and say in this case, check this out. I'm going to say content, this content here, which means it has all of this information. So I want to probe in and get to main. No, remember, this is a map. So I can go ahead and go to main by saying, go directly and find the main property. It's because it's a map, I'm going to pass in main. So now we are here. What do we want? We want temp. Well, how do we do that? We access temp. Now, because once we have the data, we can return an actual container or an actual widget. In this case, is a call is a container which contains a column which contains a list title. And then I'm passing in the actual uh, title or the actual temp I go to main and get a temp in our JSON. Because remember, the snapshot here, which is this content here, is all of this, which I have access to. If you look here, we may end up having trouble because this temp here, this is not a string. This is a string. So this is going to be a double. I know this because it says 52.16 and all of it is not inside of a string. So types are very important. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just go ahead and convert it into string so that I don't have any issues. <laughs> That's it. Now check this out. 
If I save this, let's go back upstairs here and see. So we are passing the update widget when we pass in Bera. What's going to happen? Okay, so we'll call this update widget, which we pass in the city Bera. We're going to run this future builder, which then asks, hey, what is the data that I need then to in the future to be able to parse and get? Well, we said we're going to pass the get weather, which look at this is a future type which goes into our server and gets our JSON API here, JSON objects, you see, and returns all of that. And then once I have that, I ask, okay, let's make sure that I actually have the snapshot, the data that I just received. Let's make sure that it has data. There is this property called has data for any snapshot. Ah, and then I just put in a content uh, map type because it's easier for me to go through. And then I create a return, a container, which contains a column, and then I put a list inside of it. Of course, inside I put a list title, I mean, and then I put a text. Now for the text, what is that I want to show? Well, I want to go to main, and then inside of main object, I'm going to get a temp, which is temperature. This. Once I get that, I know that is not a string, so I'm going to say to string so that I don't run into issues because this is indeed a double. And how do I know that? Well, it has decimal points, but most importantly, it is not inside of quotes. That's it. You see how easy this was? We are leveraging Flutter library. Now, if we save this, we should be able to make sure to run. And look at that. 39.11 in Barra. Is that true? Let's go. Barra 39.11. Yes. Ah, see, it's black, but you can see it is exactly what we're getting here. Very cool. Now we got a few, uh, not errors, obviously, because everything worked fine. Uh, we will, we will we'll take care of all of that. But I just want to uh, show you how easy it is to use the future builder. So anytime that you want to get stuff in the future asynchronously, obviously the async, you can always use feature builder. You've passed in a future object type, which in this case we're in like because we created this function future, which goes to the server and gets all that information. That's all, right? And then in our builder here to build, we pass in the context and the snapshot map, which is in a sync snapshot. And then you do all your business. Okay, so here to avoid all this issue because we are in container to avoid all of this noise that we're getting here little complaints now if snapshot has not doesn't have in data i can put an else here and i'm going to say just new uh say return new container as such okay give it a quick run and there we go you can see in order to get rid of that the, the problem, we just put this else new container just in case. Uh, it just shows a new container, right? Now, if we want to see this, let's make this a little bit bigger so you can actually see and we can change here in, the, in our code. That way you don't think that I am full of lies. Okay, I'm going to say style, new text style. Let's just give it font style. Make it normal. Font size, we want this to be, we said 49.9 before, remember? Same things we had before. Font size, well, font weight. Font weight that 50. Like that. That looks good. Uh, how about color? Let's say colors that white. All right. Save this real quick. And there we go. All right. Let's change the city to something else you can see. Let's say San. I'm going to say plus Francisco. Got to run it. 7986, let's see if that's true. San Francisco. 
Francisco. Oops, San. Oh, oh yeah. Oop, oh, oh, oh. Said plus. There we go. Enter. There we go. Let's seventy nine eighty six. Seven nine eighty six. Yes. Very cool. All right. So the 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 most important thing here is that we were able to use the knowledge we had before and we add something else, which is the future builder uh, widget here, which allows us to build a future object, a future widget with the future data that we're getting, and also we're able to build whatever we want. In this case, we put a container. Inside of this container, we put our text, and we can put anything else we want. Anytime we find this app, it's always going to go and get the information we want instantly. Ah, exciting. Perfect. So I will see you in the next video where we continue working on this, and I'm very excited to show you more stuff. Okay, we're getting there, folks. Perfect. I'll see you next.